Welcome to the Power of Your Voice podcast with your host, Johnny Gorky. You have the power to overcome challenges and fears. Let my voice and the voice of many others show you how to transform these challenges into opportunities. To learn more about future podcasts and read episode show notes, check out my website at www.thepowerofyourvoice.com. This is episode 11, and today's guest is Dale Troy, who is a graduate of Yale College and Yale Law School. She worked as a trust and estate attorney and switched career paths and became a health coach. She specializes in helping college students reduce their stress by changing their daily habits. She has three daughters. Two have graduated from college and one is now a senior. She has seen firsthand how much stress students are experiencing and why they need support. She is very passionate about helping college students and created Crush College Stress, which is a program designed to help students reduce their stress. So Dale, you're this incredible woman. You have three amazing daughters. You are now a health coach. The story is you attended Yale College, you got your BA, and you received your JD from Yale Law School and worked as a trust and estate attorney. What made you decide to transition from law to health? That's a good question. Thanks for having me, by the way. Oh, you're so very welcome. Thank you for being on the Power of Your Voice podcast. Okay. Well, I wasn't in law for very long. Was it four short years. And then I became a headhunter for lawyers. And I did that for 10 years. I really enjoyed that actually, because I like, I like helping people and I was helping them move from one job to another. Um, but once I had my second child, I decided I couldn't work anymore. So when I wanted to go back into the working world, I wanted to choose something that I had more passion about and it was always about helping people. But my real interest is, has always been health because I had a lot of health issues growing up and I wanted to know more about health and I wanted to be able to help people with their health problems. That, that's great. So how do you overcome your wheat sensitivity as this is something, you know, it's a lot of people struggle with this and they're not even always even aware that they have this issue. That is true. I mean, it's become a very popular concept that people say um, gluten free. But when I stopped uh, eating wheat, it was 35 years ago, and nobody, was, nobody knew anything about it. Um, what happened with me is I was actually feeling nauseous for years and years. I mean, I, probably 10 years. And nobody, I had gone to so many different doctors, nobody could figure out what was wrong with me. There was nothing that would ever show up on any test. And ultimately, I went to an allergist who was considered kind of radical, so he, he started testing me, um, it's called sublingually under the tongue. He would, you would put like a, a drop of whatever, of all sorts of different foods and you, he would see what you had a reaction to. And I immediately had a reaction to the wheat. So once I saw that, he told me to take wheat out of my diet. I did a whole big elimination diet where you, you can only eat one food at a time and you write down what, you, what your reaction is. And that convinced me 100% that wheat was not good for my body. So I stopped eating it. It's kind wow. of just cold turkey. And that must be hard because especially here in the United States, a lot of people, we eat a lot of bread, 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 bread. I know. Well, you know, 35 years ago, there weren't a lot of options. Now if you go into any grocery store, there's, so, there's shelves of gluten-free products. But at the time, there, were, there was nothing. So I learned how to make my own breads out of things like millet flour and rice flour. And nobody else would eat it but me. I mean, my, anyone else in my house thought it was just horrible, dry, crumbly, you know, wasn't good at all. But I thought it was fine. So I just really changed my whole way of eating and my taste buds. And I have stuck with it all this time. Well, well, one thing is interesting too. Sometimes I hear people, you know, they have wheat allergies, but if they go to Europe, I guess because those wheat grains are so much older, they can eat that and they're fine. But then when they come back to the United States and they eat it, I guess because things have been mutated so much that it affects them, but the, the older grains are okay. 
Um, I've heard that too. I, I wouldn't want to try it myself because I just don't want to <laughs> don't want to go back to where I was. But yes, I have heard that from many people that it's more like the original grains that our grandparents ate. But here, everything has been processed, and you know things have been mixed up. Different grains of you know, there's just like it's like a totally it's not it's not the same product as as our grandparents were eating, and that's why. You know, so many people are can't. I really can't digest it. That's really big, the biggest problem. They can't digest it. Yeah, they get a lot of bloating issues, that yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. Well, the interesting thing is, I wasn't even thinking about this until now. My oldest sister, she used to have when she would have a menstrual cycle. It used to be heavily, heavily bleeding, and she just thought that was normal for like I don't know, probably like thirty years. And then she found that she had the the wheat sensitivity as well. When she discovered that, and she stopped eating wheat. Her menstrual cycle went back to normal, but wow. she never knew that. And I'm like, that's incredible. So for about 30 years of her life, she had to suffer all that time if she only knew what was going on with her body at that time. No. And, and the doctors didn't know, right? No, no one knew. Yeah, nobody knew. Yeah. Sometimes, I mean, there's, there's so many uh, alternative practitioners now and there's so many uh, because the traditional doctors really kind of are kind of narrow in what they know. I have found over the years that you just, you have to explore, you have to kind of take your health into your own hands and explore different avenues to find, uh, you know, the real reason, the real underlying cause of something. Yeah. Well, and, and so someone who's, I've worked in health field for quite some time. A lot of times too, people, sometimes they just put too much trust in a the doctor. They think that the doctor is the one who's in charge of the health when really eh, they're in charge of their own health. You know, you have to be your own healthcare advocate yourself. Yeah, you, you do. You need to do your own research. You need to ask other people, you know, what doctors have they seen, what, you know, non-traditional doctors they've seen, whether it's a, I, I really believe in the functional medicine concept where they're looking at really like the root cause of something. They're not trying to just like give you a medicine that's going to mask the symptom that you're having. They're actually going to try to figure out, you know, why are you having it? Where does it come from? Why, why are you having that symptom? Can you elaborate a little bit on that? Because some people might not be too familiar with functional because I, I honestly I haven't even heard that. You haven't heard of that. You know, as opposed to a, a traditional doctor, they usually, you know, they, they test your blood, they, you know, do your basic um, measurements of your blood pressure and so forth. They find something that's abnormal, they're what they usually do is they'll say, well, this medication will help get it back to the level it's supposed to be at, or you know, add this in order to increase something. But they're not really, they're not thinking about, well, why, did, why do you have that? You know, why is, why is your iron so high or why is something else so low? They're not, really, they're, not, they're not really concerned with that. They're just concerned with getting it back to normal, whatever the normal level is supposed to be. Whereas a functional medicine doctor is totally focused on why did this happen? You know, why is, you know... Um, why is your vitamin D level so low? Or, you know, why, uh, why is your heart rate increasing for no reason, That's supposedly no reason? So they, they really, they delve into it deeper and they try to find out like the, like the root cause. You know, what's functioning, what's abnormal in the way your body's functioning? You know, what, what is it that is causing that to happen? So they're looking, they're looking deeper, like layers down. Yeah, they're not necessarily giving you a medication. They might... They might give you a supplement or they might um, say, you know, you're, so, something's high, but it has nothing to do with that particular vitamin. It's because some other vitamin you don't have enough of. Now, for some people who are listening to this podcast episode and they're familiar mm -hmm. with health and they understand some of the terminology, how do they find out your baseline? Because, you know, if your baseline is so out of whack, how can they really figure out where you're supposed to be? Well, there's, there are... Um, kind of standard norms for any human being mm -hmm. but those norms don't necessarily apply to every person because you know like what's a good weight for me may not be a good weight for somebody else i think a functional medicine doctor also is just more attuned to looking at an individual as an individual right. as, opposed, as opposed to just you know do you fit into the basic norms that i have in my standard textbook so why did you choose college students and what you do and the population that you serve? Well, for many reasons. 
number one was because I was sick during college, as I just explained to you with the wheat issue. So I really didn't have a, what I consider a, a happy college experience because I was always concerned with how I was feeling. I, it was so bad that I would think about where I was sitting in the classroom because I, I felt so nauseous. I thought I, I might have to leave, leave and go to the bathroom, which never happened, but that's just how I felt. That's how my body was feeling. So that was, that's one thing. Um, secondly, I have three daughters, as you mentioned, two already graduated from college and one's a senior. And I've seen firsthand how stressful college is now. Um, I mean, it's just leaps and bounds above where it was when I was in college. I think there's just so much competition. All the social media makes everybody realize, you know, what everyone else is doing and makes them not feel as good about themselves and more competitive. You know, it's, it's, it really feels like a different world to me. There's so many suicides and drug issues and alcohol issues. I mean, uh, that just wasn't the case back when in the 80s when I was in college. So I, I think that there's something going wrong. And the college population has really not been, you know, people aren't really paying enough attention to it. I think colleges tend to help people who are having acute problems, you know, major depression or anxiety, then, they, then, then they're there to, to help them. I, I, I think they do a relatively good job. But for the average college student, there's not a lot of support. And I thought that there was really something missing there that I could fill a need. You know, it was, it was an obvious need in my mind. And I thought uh, that would be something that I could really feel good about helping. Well, the thing is, if you ask any college student, I mean, you can pretty much laugh. Everyone that I've ever met in college is stressed out, you know, and it's funny because the, the courses you take, uh, I have a degree in exercise science. Every, almost every subject talks about stress. Don't be stressed out. Don't be stressed <laughs> out. Stress is toxic. Stress can kill you. But college, going to a school, you're stressed out all the time. And yes, right. sometimes they have these activities that you can do to get rid of stress, but you don't even have time to go to these, these events. And then, you know, talk about nutrition. If you ever go to the cafeteria at any school, pretty much, honestly, the food that they serve is junk. It's right. all pizza and fried food, fried chicken, fried this, fried that. They don't really serve healthy food. And, you know, when you're dealing with this young population, you know, they need to learn good nutrition. It's so important. I totally agree. Yeah. I mean, most, a lot of what I studied was nutrition and, but that's, you know, I, I don't, I don't really understand it. I, I feel the same way about hospitals. You go to a hospital to get better and they serve you the worst food ever. So much sugar, fried, you know, it's no nutritional value, overly cooked vegetables. So I totally agree with you. In college, I mean, the options, they may have a salad bar, but it's usually not that, you know, varied or, or and that may not even be available at every school. But that is definitely one thing that colleges are missing is nutrition. But, you know, in addition to that, I think kids leave their home without really knowing how to take care of themselves by themselves. They, they just kind of, they lived in a family and their parents told them when to get up, you know, what to do, when to go. They, they don't really have to think about it themselves. So once they're on a college campus and they can do anything that they want, they don't necessarily know what to do or how to make good choices. Exactly. Well, I mean, if you really think about it for probably a lot of Americans, you know, you go eat fast food, some for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Then they go to school, then they're eating garbage and then they go to universities and then they graduate and they never learn those healthy ways of living they don't exercise and are eating healthy and they continue to cycle on and on and then when they have kids they do the same thing so it really it all starts with us teaching people about eating ex eating healthy food and exercising i mean really you know yeah. you really have to teach teach us at the house you can't expect to learn this at school well that, that is you know i wish I wish that everybody felt that way because, um, I, I mean, I think really something should be done about it. But I don't, but I think some, you know, some elementary schools and high schools are starting to focus more on health. There are a lot that have gardens now where they're growing their own food and teaching kids about eating healthier, yes. uh, which is wonderful. But, you know, it's going to take a long time. So from, from my perspective, 
you know, the college students are getting to college without knowing any of that, without understanding how, how important it is to get enough sleep or to drink enough water. I mean, there's so many aspects of their life that they don't really, they don't know how significant it is and how it affects their mood and how they feel and how well they do it, you know, in terms of grades and so forth. Because you really can't function well, your brain can't function well if you're not eating well and exercising and sleeping and all the rest. Yeah, well, and then another thing too is you have a lot of college kids, they're not even eating breakfast. They go to yeah. school, they don't eat anything. Uh, a while ago, I was watching this documentary. This is in France, but they have elementary kids. They actually have a garden and they grow their own food that feeds the entire school. And then the kids, every day, they go out in the garden and then they eat this foods. And they absolutely love it because it's fresh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm actually, yeah, I'm part of a company. Um, I kind of do on the side that is that has something called tower gardens where um, and they bring them into schools to help kids learn how to to grow food and, and eat healthy food a lot of kids don't even know like what a cu- cucumber is or, a, or 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 even lettuce what lettuce looks like growing because they they haven't had it so it that's a great thing but I, it's not going to catch up to the college people quick enough for me so I want to, you know, be there to support the college students and, and help them really, you know, figure out how to take these healthy habits and make them part of what they're doing in, in college. Exactly, which is beautiful because, I mean, really, when you start out with young kids or adults and they learn these habits, they're going to pass these on to their kids as well. So it's a total win-win for everybody. Right, right. I mean, yeah, everything I, that I help the college students with, I mean, I don't, I don't expect them to drop it when they graduate. Exactly. I, I expect them to take it with them and have it be part of who they are in, yes. in real life. Yeah. yeah, exactly. It's all about a healthy lifestyle. So now you designed a program called Crush College Stress. What exactly is this and why does it work? Okay. Well, as we've been saying, it's, it's all about habits. So it includes everything from time management to how to sleep well, the healthy eating part and drinking water, all sorts of stress reduction tools like a gratitude journal and meditation and deep breathing. So it, 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 it really covers everything related to life in college. And what I do is I, I have sessions once a week. And after each session, they are asked to implement whatever we've been talking about. So it's not just hearing it. They actually have to do it. Practice, yes. Practice, yeah. So because I want it to become a new habit because, you know, that's the whole point is that we need to make new habits or better habits that are going to support them and make them feel less stressed in college. So for a whole week, they're starting, they're trying a new habit and they're, and I'm communicating with them maybe through texting or an email and making sure that they are doing what we've talked about. And then they come back the next session and we discuss it and then we move on to another topic. So I think it works because it's all about implementation. It's all about, you know, actually doing, I call them action steps. So they actually have to take action and, and follow through. If, if they don't, you know, I can't, it's nothing, nothing's, nothing's going to happen. So if, they, if they're committed to it and they really want to feel good and feel less stressed, I have seen that it, it does work. You know, they just have to follow through and, and want to make it and want to make it happen for themselves. They have to take responsibility. Yes, which is the big word, responsibility and accountability. <laughs> How do you help someone overcome that? Because that's, that's very hard. Yeah. Well, anyways. Well, um, so far, I think I've been lucky in that, you know, the people who have, I've coached have wanted to improve themselves in some way. You know, they're, they're not happy with how they feel. They're not getting good grades or they're not sleeping well or there's something going on. So they're, you know, their parents know that they're not doing as well in college as they could be. So they're, they're committed in that way. They, they want to make a change. So, uh, you know, given that, you know, I found that just my knowing that I'm there for them and, and knowing that I can answer their questions and that I'm being supportive and that, you know, they don't have to go to their parent. They don't have to rely on anyone else. They can just, you know, I develop a really nice relationship with them and I, they feel comfortable with me. And, and I think, you know, maybe to some extent they want to please me too. So that when I meet with them the next week, they can say, yeah, I did this and that. And, you know, I'm sleeping better or 
I had, I had my plate was full of all sorts of colors, like you told me, or, you know, whatever the topic was that we were talking about. So some of that is just like a coaching relationship that I developed with them. I think also they start to see from implementing all of these different habits, they start to see that they feel better or they start to see that they have more energy or that their, their mind is clearer, you know, all sorts of things so that they, they realize it's working and that makes them more motivated to continue. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's the thing. It's like once you start exercising and you start eating healthy, I mean, you do feel so much better, you know, and, and that's the thing. It's like, you know, I just think about when I was a kid, it's like you didn't eat breakfast the entire time you're in class. You just, you, you can't focus. You just cannot focus. You right. know, it's so very important to eat healthy. I mean, it really, really helps people out do a lot better in school. Oh, it does. It does. And actually what I, what I love to see is when somebody takes what they've learned and then they like figure out how to kind of tweak it for themselves. Like I, as an example, I had one freshman boy who realized that he didn't have enough time in his day to get enough work done. And he, he was unhappy with his grades. So he decided on his own to wake up at five in the morning, take, um, a little jog over to a Starbucks that was open, you know, have some breakfast there and do some work before classes started. So he, you know, he kind of just switched around his whole routine in order to get, you know, he actually thought he was getting a little exercise in, a little exercise in, and, you know, he had his breakfast there and he also got some work done and that like changed everything for him. So wow. I thought that, that was really amazing. And going there at five o'clock in the morning, there's no one there probably. Yes. Yeah. Nobody to bother you. Yeah. yeah. Wow. <laughs> That's incredible. Yeah. So what does college, what does crush college stress offer that parents and students can't get anywhere else? Okay. Well, going along with what we've been saying, it really focuses on lifestyle habits. Whereas I think the only, the only thing that I've seen available to kids in colleges really is, is more about mental health. And that, that's not my main focus. I mean, I think I help with that just based on all these changes in, in their routine. It will make them feel less stressed and less anxious. But I'm not, you know, whereas if they go to the health center and they say they're stressed, they're going to talk to somebody just about their mind. They're not going to talk about everything else going on in their life. So I, I'm just, it's much more holistic, much more comprehensive. I also have heard from many students that if they wanted to get an appointment at a health center, you know, it could be like two months from now that they can even see anybody. And most likely all they're going to do is, you know, talk to them a little bit and then say, well, you have anxiety, I'll give you the prescription. You know, they're, they're not going to, they're not going to look deeper. So um, I'm not aware of anything like what I'm offering, honestly. So I don't, uh, I guess that's why I think it, you know, I, I would, uh, you know, my, my dream would be to have something like this available to every student. I, I, I just think it's kind of basic, basic knowledge and basic, you know, lifestyle skills that people, that everybody should have. That's great. And one thing you might not even be aware of, just like myself, honestly, when I was in school, I was so stressed out and anxious that, uh, you know, some people get sweaty palms and all that kind of stuff. And I saw a doctor and he prescribed me some, uh, some like anti-anxiety pill. Mm -hmm. And he forgot to mention to me that this pill, you're supposed to cut it into four pieces. Oh my gosh. Well, I took the whole thing. I took it for about a week and I got severe heart palpitations. So I felt like I was going to have a heart attack. I felt really, really bad. I'm like, you know what? This is not even worth taking. And then, of course, you know, when I did see him, he's like, well, I did tell you to cut in half to four pieces. I'm like, no, you forgot to mention that. He's like, I'm sorry. But uh, anyways, it's like, you know, the things like it's amazing because you have this natural thing you can take. You know, thank God I didn't die. But right. this is this is real. This could actually happen to somebody. And that's the yeah. problem, that, you know, I have with medication. It's nice when you have something that's natural. Right. That can really help someone with distress because the pill is not going to fix distress. No, it, it's kind of like the difference between a regular doctor and a functional medicine doctor. 
see the functional medicine doctor try to figure out well, why you're having the stress and then help you with all the other, you know, help you deal with it without giving you medication. Yeah. I mean, for some people, they might need stress. Yeah, some people might. Because, yeah. you know, they have that throughout their life. But if you only get it through college, such as myself, like I was, this is perfect. I love what you're doing. This is, this is so great. Well, thank you. Thank oh, you very much. You are so very welcome. So I have another question. For any person who's listening to this right now that is struggling with college stress, what can they do right now to help stress and make, make, make college more fun? Because, you know, just like you were saying earlier, when you went to school, school was fun. When I was in school, school, just to be honest, it was not fun. Right, right. How can you make it more fun? Uh, <laughs> very, that's, a, that's a hard question. I guess, well, in terms of tips, like what you can do, I think the biggest thing that people can do is so simple, which is deep breathing. Because you, if, you're, if you're breathing shallowly, you can create a stress reaction in your body. The opposite is the case if you're, de if you're breathing from your diaphragm, like a slow, deep breath from your diaphragm. And if you just, you know, so as soon as even, you know, if I feel anxious about something, say I'm driving in a car and, and it's um, I'm all of a sudden, you know, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of traffic and I'm getting worried that somebody might hit me or I don't know where I'm going or whatever it is. I'll just do some deep breathing in the car. It just slows everything down. It clears your mind. It, it just calms you. It's just an, an automatic calming. Whereas if I kept on with that like shallow breathing, I could have a panic attack. That is something that we all carry around with us. I don't think people realize how important it is to, to just breathe slowly and use your diaphragm. And I, you know, when I'm working with students, I'll have them do that just for a couple of minutes and like they immediately feel calmer. So it's just like a simple, simple thing that people can do. So for anyone who's listened to this episode right now, what would you like them to take away from this? Yes, I'd like them to take away that they can have more control over how they feel. That they, they you know, I admit, I, I know that college is stressful, but it doesn't have to feel as stressful as you're feeling right now. Because once you, you know, if you learn how to, you know, make better choices, have better habits, everything that's going to support your body and, and reduce stress in, your, in, in how you feel, then you know, you, you're going to feel better physically and you're also going to feel better mentally. And just knowing that you have, that you have the ability to have more control just makes you feel happier because it's not like somebody's doing something to you. You, you know, you can, you know, you can be the one to choose eating healthy, to choose having a good sleep routine, to choose exercising regularly, you know, putting all these things together it's going to make your body more re resilient, you know, less subject to, to stresses. And um, also I talk a lot about positive thinking. So, you know, the whole mind, mind, body connection. And when you get all of these pieces, it's like a puzzle. If you put them all together, you're just going to be a stronger person and, you know, better able to deal with whatever stress you're faced with in college. Exactly. Well, and the big thing too is like, you get stressed out before you even get to college. You apply for school, then you get accepted, then you start, and they're like, "Oh my gosh, now I'm going to be deeply in debt." And now I got to stay in school, and I now I got to maybe get a side job, and then I got to keep my grades up because I'm going to get kicked out of my school, and then I'm trying to be popular, and it's just so much stuff that's involved in school. Yeah. You know, it's probably nothing like it used to be. You know, back in the days. No, I mean it was certainly stressful, but not I. I definitely know that it's much worse now. Um, and then, of course, then there's the stress of, am I going to get a job after college? You know, what am I doing this for? It's totally stressful. And I hear that word so often. That's why I call my program Crush College Stress, because that the word stress is used so frequently by, by people. You know, I believe in, I believe you can crush it. I believe that you can, you can learn what you need to learn and take control and not feel so stressed or if you feel stressed it's not like an, it's not ongoing you know maybe you're a little bit stressed over something but you can bring it back to feeling more calm you don't have to live in a constant stress state exactly well one thing that's really good too about your program then is you know for some people like i want to go to college 
but I'm not going to go to college because it's just going to be stressed out. So mm-hmm. it's nice that you have some natural way that you can help these people before they even go to school. That way, when they do get into the school, they're already prepared and they'll be fine, which is just really, really good. You know, they don't have to wait till they're really stressed out before they start your program. That is true. Yeah. I think it'd be, it, it, it's a great thing for kids to do like at the end of senior year or in the summer before they go to college, just as you said, as a preparation. So they know like, so they have like, they feel like they're already in control. They know what to do when, when, you know, when they get there. Yeah. So Dale, so, so parents and students now, if they want to reach out to you, how can they find out where you are? How do they roll in your system? You know, are you on social media? You know, all that kind of stuff. How can they find you? Yeah. Well, do you have show notes? I mean, I guess you can put in my website. Yes. I uh, um, yeah. Um, probably the best thing to do would be to go to my website, which is www.transformyourhealth.com. But I'll have to tell you how to spell that. It's spelled a little differently. And from there, it takes you to a video where I talk about my program. And if you want to learn more, there's a way to learn more that way. In addition, you know, you're welcome to put my, um, an email in your show notes as well. But I'd be happy to talk to anybody. Um, I have a, you know, a calendar schedule where you can just have a free call with me no commitment. Uh, we can see whether I would be a, a good person to work with your, your student. Perfect. Perfect. I love it. Well, thank you so very much for being on the Power Be Voice podcast. I really, really appreciate your time. Thank you. Oh, well, thank you very much. I enjoyed it and appreciate you. You're welcome. Okay. Take care. Johnny here. Thank you for listening to the Power Be Voice podcast. I'd love to get your feedback on this episode and how it impacted you. If someone in your life could benefit from this episode, Share it with them. Check out thepoweryvoice.com to read show notes, leave a comment on the blog page, and to stay updated on all future episodes, subscribe to this podcast and leave a five-star review. Thank you for your love and support.